Here's our code from the previous video. One thing I wanted to point out before actually executing it and showing you how it works uh, with the debugger is this pop ended up popping off the value pushed on by this push. All right, and this pop here popped off the value pushed on by this push. And this pop here, so on and so forth, you can see the last in, first out approach going on here. But basically, this is the last guy in, first guy out, and then the next value was the last guy in, and then it's the first one out, so on and so forth. And that's important to keep note of. And then you also, we don't have to push, 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 then pop, 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 pop. Generally, we do, but we're not limited to that. I could certainly, uh, I don't know, pop EBX here and then push again, I don't know, some other value. It doesn't really matter. You can pop and push all you want to. If you notice the... CPU is just a grandiose calculator that we have to program specifically to, to do things. If you've used a TAI-82 or 83 or any of those fancy Texas Instruments graphing calculators, you can program them as well. All right, that's all you're doing. Anyway, let's see this in action. Again, the stack is just another piece of memory, bits and bytes, sectioned off to behave in such a way that we push to it and we pop from it. F11... Uh, control alt d f11 and here we go here's the pushes here are the pops so on and so forth now when i hit f11 what's going to change all right and in every instruction i've shown you up to this point i can say hey if you move into the eax register that'll change the eax register if you do a jump that's going to change the instruction pointer what will change when i do this push and pop if i change values if we went back to our original code and we change these values I could certainly go out to memory and show you those values changing and I've told you that the stack sits out in memory it's just a different sectioned off treated differently piece of RAM but it's still bits and bytes it doesn't really matter so what will change is, are the values of the stack I told you this will push an 8 onto the stack well how do we tell where the stacks at and more importantly how does the CPU tell where the stack is at in memory any idea I'll give you a hint, it's register. We have lots of available options over here on the right. Any idea which one of these would make a good register to track where the stack is pointing at? Oh, I just gave it away, the stack pointer. All right, this value here is, is pointing at the address in RAM that represents the top of the stack. And the stack isn't just for our little assembly program. It's being used by C++ before we even got in here. But right now the stack is right here. Let me show you how to pull it up. Let's click on memory here and pin it and then grab this value. It's a hexadecimal value. Copy it, paste it, put an H on the end for hex, hit enter, and we are now looking at the value that is at the top of the stack. No concern of ours. All right, it belongs to whatever uh, C++ did before we got into our assembly code. I'm going to push 8. Any idea what will change here? Pause the video, think about it, come back. F11. Oh, I don't see an 8 anywhere, do you? Let me scroll up. Hey, there it is. All right, remember the stack pointer is pointing at the top of the stack. You can see it's red as well, meaning it changed. And we went from this, or to this part of the stack right here, to now the top of the stack is F4, which you can see right here. That's quite nice. So visibly, or visually, our stack is growing this way where the stack pointer is pointing at the top element but before I move on I want to point out these memory addresses in the window okay are these memory addresses these values right here are they counting upwards this direction or are they counting upwards this direction as far as memory addresses are concerned and this is the question I'm really getting at is is the stack growing upwards in memory or is it growing downwards in memory Pause the video, look at this for a minute. Okay, well, the stack pointer was here. It moved up to here, at least visually up to here, but F4 is less than F8. All right, so as far as memory is concerned, memory addresses are growing this way, but our stack is growing this way. So if you hear people say the stack is growing downwards, that's what they mean is it's when we push onto it, it's... It's decreasing the address that we're storing values at. Does it matter? No. <laughs> In fact, it's nice that visually, yeah, we have a consistent representation here. That visually it's growing up, but as far as memory addresses go, it's growing down. I'm actually going to go to the effort of 
drawing the bottom of our stack as far as we're concerned. This stuff down here belongs to C++, but I'll just draw the bottom of our stack there. And we just pushed this value, 8, onto the stack. And now we're going to push 0e hex onto the stack. So let me click there, hit F11. First of all, before I do that, what's going to change? Two things will change. Can you think of what they are? This right here will change to a 0e, and the rest of these will become 0 because they're leading zeros. And then the stack pointer will also move up. Let me draw the stack pointer here in red. This now oh, that's not showing up. Let's do green. This is our stack pointer pointing right here. F4, F4. Let me hit F10 or F11 here. F11. So our stack pointer changed. It moved up to F0 or down to F0 to be consistent with the addresses. Here is our stack pointer. It is no longer right here. And then we also push the value 0e onto the stack right there. So here is 0e, so on and so forth. Well, hopefully it's intuitive what pushing eax will do. All right, here's the rubbish that is in eax. But we will copy that value to right here. And our stack pointer, the stack pointer register, will change to that address, this 3FFEEC, like so. So let me, I need a bigger eraser. Let me hit F11 and watch both of those values change. F11, here it is, C0, 1F, 1, 2, 0, 0, which is actually, <laughs> how does this compare to the value that we just pushed in there? Here's the Value. Did we not just say push EAX and EAX is 00121FC0 and yet we have C01F12? What's going on here? Well, let me try to illustrate. C0, C0, 1F, 1F, 1, 2, 1, 2, 0, 0, 0, 0. What we're seeing is big endian, little endian issues again. I talked about this in a previous video, but it wouldn't hurt to illustrate this one more time. The Intel architecture stores the least significant byte at the lowest address. All right, let me see if I can illustrate that. Let's just look at these four bytes by themselves. Which one is at the lowest address? Well, C is less than zero. So that would mean that this C0, that's kind of weird, C0, C0. This C0 is the lowest address. So we'll just label it zero. And then this will be address one and address two and address three if we're only considering these four bytes. So the least significant portion of this value that is in EAX is C0. So it is stored at the lowest byte or EC or 0 as far as this is concerned. Maybe that's a little too confusing to have that 0, 1, 2, 3 there. But there we go. There is our C0. And then our 1F, well, this is the next significant byte, so it's stored right there. And then the next significant byte is the 1, 2, so it's stored right there. This is little endian. All right, go Google that and look up the Wikipedia article on, on little endian. It's kind of funny how Gulliver's Travels plays into little endian. Big Indian. Let me illustrate, though, what it means to be the lift, least significant byte. That might be new to you. Hopefully it's not, but it's in the binary videos playlist if you want to watch that. But let me just illustrate here. If I said this was your bank account, all right, well, 0, 0, 1, 2, 1, F, C, 0. And I said, hey, I get a 0 out some of these bytes. All right, let's say I get a 0 out 2 bytes. Which two bytes do you want me to zero out? Do you want me to zero out the first two or do you want me to zero out the last two? Well, let me explain that differently in decimals. Say, let's say we had 2,398 dollars in our bank account. And I said, hey, I get to zero out two digits of your bank account. Which two digits do you want me to change to a zero? Well, if you're smart, you'll have me change these two digits to a zero because that's the most that's the least amount of loss all right that'll be what you'll have left is twenty three hundred dollars you lost ninety eight dollars well that's i mean yeah that hurts but hey at least you still have your twenty three hundred but if you tell me to zero out these two digits well then all of a sudden you have zero zero ninety eight dollars in your bank account you just lost twenty three hundred dollars not ideal 
by any means. Anyway, that's what I mean by least significant. This is the least significant portion of this 4-byte value, and it is stored at the lowest address when it comes to memory. Let me, I'm going to pause the video and clean up the drawings here. Okay, hopefully that made sense what I just said. And then when we pushed EAX there, that changes our stack pointer to right here. And now this value is at the top of our stack. And you can see the stack pointer is at 3FFEEC, which is 3FFEEC underneath my drawing there. Very cool. So every time we push, the stack pointer will change, and also some piece of memory will change as well. Let's do the next push, EAX. All right, these bytes will essentially turn into the same as these bytes right there. And I forgot to erase this right there. So let's let's do that. And again, the stack pointer will move up to right here. So F11, there you go, C01, F1, same thing. Let's move our stack pointer up because the stack pointer did move up right here. Or not, that's the instruction point. The stack pointer changed right here. And then this is now the top of our stack. Oh, this is getting exhausting. Let's push 4.8. All right. Well, even before I do that, I can draw the new stack pointer right there. Erase the old, erase the old stack pointer and draw the top of our stack like so. And these values in here will change to 4.8. So this will be a 4.8, and then the rest will be zeros like so. F11. F11. All right, there we go. <sighs> okay, so now we have this nice full stack. It almost looks like dinner plates when I highlight it here with the drawing application I'm using. The top of our stack is pointing at the stack, and now we're simply going to pop off the top of our stack into EBX, ECX, EDX, EAX, so on and so forth. So here's our, our first pop, EBX. EBX right now is 0. zero, zero, zero. The top of our stack is 4.8. Zero, 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 zero. So this will change to a zero, 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 four, eight. All right, again, we're little Indian. So watch what happens. Watch this. It'll change to a four, eight. And then also our stack pointer, our stack pointer will change again. It will change down to here. All right, but then here, let me ask you one other thought-provoking question before I hit F11. How will these bytes change? Okay, what's going to happen? Are they going to zero out? I'm popping them off the stack. Are they going to turn into zeros? Or are they going to turn back to what they were before I pushed into them? What's going to happen? Pause the video, think about it, and then come back, watch me hit F11. Okay, here we go. F11. Hey, here's our 4.8. Sure enough, we pop that into EBX. Our stack pointer moved down to FEE8 right there. And look at this. That's just left over there. Okay, that's that's kind of cool thing about RAM is, yeah, those bits maintain their value, but they have no meaning to us. They are dead to us. We just disowned them. That's kind of rude. And now the top of our stack is not up here. We've just popped that value off. So whenever we see rubbish in RAM, that's kind of what I mean by rubbish. Is at one point it had meaning to someone somewhere at some program, but now we've abandoned it. We've We've thrown it to the bit bucket. It's dead to us. Okay, let's pop ECX. That will again move our stack pointer down to 3FFEEC. All right, I'll just, right there, that's our stack pointer. And that will also change ECX to 00121FC0, the rubbish that was in EAX right here. So watch, here we go. F11, you can see EAX and ECX are now a copy of each other because I just popped that value out. The stack pointer certainly moved down to right here. And we can erase this. We've abandoned this RAM. It is dead to us. And I, I, I'm just going to F11 through the rest of these. F11, we just pop this value off into EDX. So EDX changed the same as these. CX and EAX. And then let's pop EAX. That means EAX will change to a 0E right here. If I can hit F11 on it. 0E right there. And then here we go. Let's pop ECX. We just pop that off. ECX, we're going to 08. We will pop that off into ECX right here. 08. And then we jump into some C code. Don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. But hopefully you're gaining an intuition of hey, the stack is just RAM. It's just more bits and bytes. We just access them as a LIFO structure. Last in, first out. 
It's more memory, and this is actually very useful because the whole reason why I'm talking about the stack is so we can go back and talk about procedures or functions, as we call them in higher level languages. But we use the stack a ton when calling procedures and having procedures do things. And there's some very deep topics we'll get into there, but uh, I mean, they're, I don't know, maybe they are deep, maybe they're not. Let's keep moving on.